Okay, so real questions. Mm-hmm. Training last real week. St. George, everything. One of the big things for you is obviously like mental prep right now and trying to finalize all the things here that you can before leaving. Um, mm-hmm. You know, last week we kind of talked about, you know, you you practice like you fight. You, you want to practice like you train. You want your weekends, race day, to, that training day to simulate that as much as possible, mm-hmm. even just on like, the, like a Saturday. Like if you're going in riding or whatever and that's when your race is going to be, you want to try to make it at the same time. You want to put as many factors in as you can. And ironically, this is something that you always tell me I really suck at is picking music. So, but here, here, let me ask you this. Do you want, can you race with music? Do you train with music? Maybe. But it's different because I train by myself. Right. So it's not like I have people around me. Um, You know, you, you don't really have a lot to pay attention to. When you're by yourself. Yeah. And this but is I do just... have my athletes sometimes go out on a run or a shorter ride or a shorter run, and I'll ask them to not use music just to kind of, you know, so they'll focus more on, like, especially on the run, like body position, arm swing, foot, um, yeah. you know, hearing their feet hit the, the ground, foot strike. And for some people, um, actually, most people, they do, they're like, oh, wow, I, you know, I'm more in tune to what I'm doing with my body and I can hear my foot strike. That's a big one on the run. Um, but if you're going out for like a four and a half hour bike ride, I'm not going to, you need music. See, but this is something like that I've been like, ta- like thinking about myself. Cause I love, mm-hmm. I think music is incredibly beneficial for many things, mm-hmm. but to oh, actually yeah. like help set a cadence and to, mm-hmm. you know, that's why in the military, like we, we march with cadences and things like that. It helps. Mm-hmm. And there's right. a huge benefit to it. And, you know, I love it. And a lot of times I'll listen to, like, instrumental stuff, um, especially for longer workouts or whatever, because I don't want that, like, oh, like, and then be, like, blown up and done. So, I, so you I, want, like, Hell's Bells, you know, playing in the background? Right, you know, because I've got a four-hour ride, so like Hell's Bells for four instead. hours. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this. <laughs> um, you know, and that's a whole nother topic in itself. And I think that lo- we, we have some really cool companies right here in Park City or right there in Park City, um, like mm-hmm. Jaybird and Skull Candy that have done a lot of stuff with this and something that I want to kind of sit down with some of their, like, because they have a lot of scientists behind a lot of the programs that they run. And that as I kind of dive into it, I'm curious to talk to them a little bit about it. But right. then again, like, if I get so use that to be really efficient in my training, and that's something well, that I, I use, then I can't, but then if we can't, because I mean, I'm sure like recreational races or whatever, it's, they don't care, but like, I know like Ironman, you're not allowed to, right? No, yeah, it's against the rules. Um, not just Ironman, but any USAT so sanctioned any race, sanctioned you're not allowed race, to have yeah. headphones on the bike or the run. Is that solely because of safety? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it makes sense because um, a lot of times people will pass you on the bike quite close to you on the left and you need to be able to hear yeah. on the left even though sometimes they don't say that. Um, but you can hear sometimes a bike coming up on you, and that's extremely important. You need to be able to hear. Or, God forbid, if there was a volunteer trying to tell you something, uh, you know, as far as, you know, making sure you go a certain direction on the course, you don't go off course. Right. You're not going to be able to hear that with headphones. Um, and on the run, I guess they just want to carry that over on the run. Same thing, safety. You know, you have to be able to hear a volunteer or somebody has to tell you something, you know. Um so, yeah, so no, you're not allowed. But what I do, though, on the Ironmans especially, because that's like six hours on the bike yeah. um, for, you know, mid-pack age grouper. And so I'll be playing those songs in my head, yeah. you know, on the bike and when I'm out there. So I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, thinking to myself, it's okay. People look at me a little weird. It's like, it's fine. Um, well, I'm going to have to send you. So the first enduro, <laughs> no, ma- the first enduro mountain bike race I did, we recorded the whole thing. Like I wore a GoPro mm-hmm. the whole thing, <laughs> and every and like singing, I'm singing right? the whole time, <laughs> and people are like, "What?" I'm like, "Dude, I'm just flowing. I'm just getting yeah. in my flow." Like, and so I guess that's true. Is that can really help and carry over to yeah. to know what kind of rhythm. So this was something that I just kind of started thinking about this week, as I've even here as I've done a few longer runs. Um, so you say on on Wii. I, I don't and, see them on Strava on Wii. And. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 
So yeah, I was just kind of like, huh. Like halfway, and I think one of the things that really got my attention to it was halfway through it, my earbuds died. And so I was like, mother, like I quit. And I was like, that was like a, that was like a half. Called an Uber. That was like a half mile in. And uh, <laughs> you were down the end of the driveway, and you were like, "I'll oh, forget this." No, literally, my parents' driveway is a half mile through the woods, and I was like, oh. And I called my mom and asked her to bring me a charger. And, uh, <laughs> and don't tell me she did. No. no. <laughs> I didn't really call my mom. I called no. my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so what is how how was Saint George? How is the open water swim? What kind of things coming in? So what you're leaving in seven day eight days? So I leave on Monday. Okay. Um, and my race is a week from this Saturday, so the fourth. May the fourth be with me. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> Who do you identify um, with from Star Wars? Um, I don't know. Darth Vader. He's pretty cool, right? I identify with Chewbacca. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> you definitely would be Chewbacca. <laughs> we were, Maddox and I went to lunch at the marina today, and some older guy was like, dude, I love your hair. And I turned around, it's just like big old bald dude. <laughs> and Maddox was like, is that your friend? He's like, no, I mean, sure, he is, he is now. He, is now. And she's like, he doesn't have any hair. That's why he loves like, your hair. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, so this weekend, so I did two up and water swims, and then I did, I mapped, I used Map My Ride, and I know the St. George area pretty well. So I mapped out exactly 70 miles, actually it was 71 miles, and apparently exactly what the elevation gain is and i say that only because there's some been some discrepancies on the, the information we're getting on what the elevation is um so i did 71 miles and i did oh just over 4700 feet um but i didn't do it at race pace i did it just below um i didn't want to blow myself up because that's the longest ride i've done in a, <clears throat> in a while but it felt great it was really good it felt really good um the swims went okay uh, not really, actually. <laughs> like, oh, no. What is so, that? So, and not uh, what is what is the biggest thing like that you notice in the? Is it a technique thing or more of a mental thing transitioning to go and doing like that open water swim for the first time this season? It was it wasn't any of that. It was the wetsuit. So what happened was the first one went fine. I just I just I actually swam Friday morning last Friday with um some people down in uh, Salt Lake, hopped in my car, and then drove to St. George and literally drove right to the Sand Hollow water and then threw my wetsuit on and got in that water. So I like, literally went from one swim to the other from the car. Um, and that went fine. I wanted to test out the suit. I hadn't worn it yet. Um, felt great. Um, I, I followed this, this little criteria that you and I talked about last week about putting water in your suit and making sure it's fitting really well. And then Sunday, I actually connected with two people um, from the, my tri club who happen to be also in St. George. Well, they don't warm up like I warm up. They just jump in the water and go. And I think with this new suit, the lining inside of the suit, there's a different lining to make it more thermal. And it was so tight on my chest, I just couldn't breathe. We, I did 2,000 yards, <laughs> but I couldn't breathe the whole time. Um, so I'm going to try the suit out tonight after spin class and then again on Sunday. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just go back to my, my other suit that's a little thinner. So it wasn't, you know, I, I practiced my sighting and, and the stroke and all of that, and that was fine. It was just the suit itself, and that was a little unnerving. But like you said, like you definitely have to get that no, yeah, before, I get that like, taken care of. Like that's not something you want to go and be like, hey. Oh, we'll just figure it out when we get there. Yeah. And I think <laughs> yeah, that's no. something that a lot of people take for granted. Even people that are in it do. and have done it, you know, like, oh, that's what I ordered the same size wetsuit or whatever as I had before, and we're good. So, yeah. In fact, it's when just... I called the company, they said that they would have put me in a slightly smaller suit. Um, but I know that this particular size fits me because I already have this size suit in the same brand in a sleeveless. Um, but still, like you said, you never know. It could be a different cut, or and I think it's the material. The, the lining is tighter, and I didn't put a layer of water between me and the suit. 
which I always do that. And I didn't. And I think that was what happened. The suit just started to kind of like suction oh, cup yeah. to my rib cage and I couldn't breathe. That sounds awesome. I know, but I still did 2000. <laughs> and you didn't drown, so I feel like that's No, a, I didn't die. I feel like no. that, that I feel like that's always a win. It's it's a bit of a win. I wouldn't call it a loss. It's kind of a neutral. It's kind of you know, like a tie. <laughs> yeah. I'm alive. It was good. It was good. Yeah. I survived. And then I drove home. That's the worst. No, it's not that bad. It's only like four hours. I hate driving anyway. It's really not that bad. You don't need to be such a baby about it, actually. Oops, luckily, in today's day, day and age, <laughs> everybody has to be sensitive to the fact that I may be. Okay, I guess so. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Now we know. Deacon doesn't like to drive anywhere. No. For long distances. No. So don't let him be your buddy in the car. I'm actually really fond. Are you of, an, I'm really fond of traveling. Are you annoying in the car though? No. Do you like if do you like insist on picking the music? No, I probably. I, right? I don't really give anybody else an option. <laughs> That's what I just said. That's the same thing. That's what that means. No, it's totally different. <laughs> I, I don't insist on anything. I just don't ask. <laughs> you don't. You just turn on your station it. and that's it. But if yeah. it's not your car, if you're not driving, you're not in charge of yeah, the music. Yeah, see, that's something that's like, that rule. never that never happens. What? Like, that you're not driving? Yeah, like that's a like. So that, you are driving. Yeah, that's a freak like control thing. Like I have mm -hmm. to drive and be. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, like I hate being somewhere without a vehicle. Well, like where you are now, you don't have a car. Do you have a car? Yeah, and I and my parents have like extra cars or whatever. But yeah, like I can get in the car and go. Okay. But like going to like a if I went out to dinner with people or whatever, like I would rather drive than ride with a bunch of people. Yeah, I'd rather drive too. Because I do the fade. Just so you can... I do the fade too. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, see ya. Well, you get up at four in the morning, four yeah. thirty in the morning, you know. Yeah. So yeah, you got to get up early. Yeah. So and maybe it's just because you're really antisocial. There's the, possibly that. I don't. Nobody yeah. would ever say that. Well, yeah. You're right. That's true. No one would say that. Yeah. Not to your face, anyway. <laughs> the day that I get told I'm antisocial, I'm gonna be like, oh. Mm. Well, I guess people have told me that I look angry and unapproachable in the gym. But then everybody. True. It's like Maddox. But says, then they. They're just like, he just wants a hug. Yeah. See. See. Once they get to know you, then they know. People say that about me too. And look at me. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm way. Look at you. I'm way more approachable than you. Look at that hair. Dude, like, <laughs> I feel like my hair actually looks really good right now. Okay. All right. There's standards. Fashion. <laughs> So what's the so, rest of the week look like? What are your kind of big, if someone's five days out from leaving, what are the, what are your like top fives like right well, now? Well, yeah, I'm 10 days out from the race. So, and I actually have like a forced taper on um, Friday and part of Saturday. I'm going to be down in Arizona working with uh, Axio. Um, so I taught, I swam yesterday and taught spin. And then today, um, doing spin again, and I'll swim. Um, unfortunately, the next time I'm going to be able to swim is Sunday, I think, is the next time I'll get in the pool. And then I'll swim Monday before I get on the plane. So, And then when we get there, there's organized group rides and organized open waters. So I'll be participating in those. And just doing, so when I get there, since the course is three loops, I'll do one loop just so I can recon the course. All right. You know, get a workout in a third of, of what I'll be doing on the race day. Um, and then, of course, you want to do the open water swims because, I mean, not just to get in the open water, not just to get another swim in, but, um, you know, you want to swim part of the course. You'll be using the shore for sighting, um, you know, get an idea of, you know, how you're going to start. Are you going to start a beach start? Are you going to start a dock start? Are you going to start a deep water start? So, you know, making sure that you're, you know, you do all those things and practice that before the race. So, how yeah. are you feeling with it all? I feel pretty good. The bike feels pretty good. Actually, um, I just looked at my Strava, you know, Strava, and um, <laughs> and I actually PR'd a Snow Canyon in uh, on this past weekend. Now, it took mm -hmm. me 35 miles to get to Snow Canyon. So, Snow Canyon uh, Parkway or Snow Canyon 
park. Yeah, Snow Canyon Parkway. It's Snow Canyon. It's a it's a park, and it's a four mile very vertical climb. It's pretty pretty steep. Um, and I actually I looked at Strava and I realized I PR'd it, which I was, I was like, oh, Ooh. right. I know, and that was after 35 miles of riding. So, and I've ridden that canyon now one, two, three, like six times this year already so far. So, um, so I was pretty impressed with that. So yeah, I feel pretty good. I just want to get the suit situation figured out. Yeah, you should do that. I know. Thanks, thanks, Coach. I'll take care. Yeah, of that. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here to make sure you do the right stuff. Yeah, thanks for looking out for me. I can count on you. So, how long is your plane ride? Now that's jazz. Yeah, so the plane is, I'm um, taking Salt Lake to JFK, like five hours, and then JFK to Madrid, and that's like, I don't know. I don't really look at those details, because I can't control them anyway. I just know it's long. And then Madrid to uh, Vigo is really short. It's like an hour flight. It's super short, hour and a half. What time do you get in? Into madrid or vigo like mm -hmm. i get in in the morning so you get in the next day so i leave on tuesday and i get in uh i leave on monday and i get in on tuesday morning so you know i've never uh flown um like that before so we'll see how it goes what are you gonna I do mean, on the plane i think i was gonna do charades and karaoke i was gonna bring a little karaoke yeah. machine and kind of entertain everybody right i mean it's unique it's different I think it's I great. can't sleep on the plane though. I'm I'm really bad about that. I, I you know some people sound asleep. I can't sleep on the plane, so I gotta entertain myself somehow. I'll uh I'll, I'll hook you up with all of the stuff Maddox hooks me up with for our plane ride. Yeah, I saw her headphones. Those are pretty wicked, and yeah. her little like um, eye patch things. Those yeah. are like a little kitty cat or yeah, something. Yeah, she's got a yeah. unicorn and a cat on her eyes, sleeping patches, <laughs> bedazzled headphones, and a zebra print head pillow, neck pillow. Wow, and, she's uh, decked out. She, she didn't want to sleep, so she told me to put them all on. And, uh, I, sure, I look, that's I look, what happens. I feel like I look mm -hmm. pretty good. I got a few, yeah, I bet. I got a few, got a few looks. <laughs> The stewardesses didn't help you with and ask you if you wanted any drinks or anything. Yeah, they were like, here, sir. Leave that, leave that guy alone. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? Um, your big, so, again, I, I could, for my mind, I break it up into, like, five days, like, because I think the travel's a big thing. And so, like, I would yes. really think, about like, what am I going to do there? And then... Um, I keep things pretty simple, so, you know, I bring stuff with me on the plane. I usually probably going to have to buy it in the airport. I always, like, bring nuts or, like, those little protein, like, cheeses. I'll bring those on the plane and plenty of water. Um, definitely compression socks. Compression socks. Mm -hmm. Very important. Um, and then I just I keep it really simple. And then getting there, obviously, I get in there on Tuesday, but I don't have to race till Saturday, so I figured that's plenty of time to acclimate to the time change because it's an eight hour difference. They're eight hours ahead of us. Um, so, you know, from, from what I've heard is when you get there, you just start, you set your watch like as soon as you get on the plane. So that way you, you mentally yeah, start you changing your time to that time. Yeah. Um, so I'll try to sleep on the plane if I can. If not, then it didn't happen, but I'll stay awake the whole day and then go to bed that Tuesday night, Madrid time. Yeah, so I think that's the most important thing is to do that. So and party. No, no after party after not before, definitely not before. No, just chill and focus on staying healthy, staying hydrated. You know, making sure I'm eating clean. You know, before the race, no partying. Yeah, not, after not changing it up. Again, that's something no, that don't. You, like the the consistent theme is. Mm -hmm. That I mean, that, really, the most important part of any training is consistency. And that's yeah. where you know, like we talked about, even that one time, like everybody starts out and they're just like, "Oh, I'm going full bore," and then they're hurt, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. can't and link as many good days of training together. All the consistency factors of it is is huge. So, the prep, the mental prep, the food prep, like mm -hmm. it, consistency yeah. between it all is. Yeah, I've got my. Like this is my gels I, I eat on the bike, yeah. and then and then this is my powder that I bring with me. So got that stuff. That will be in my 
just to make sure I have my own fuel with me because the fuel that they have on the course, no one's ever heard of it before. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know but... who. Yeah, we've never been. No, I'm, I don't know. No one's ever heard of it before. And the, all the blog posts are all like, we don't know what that stuff is. So it's not. It's probably not bad. I've never personally ever had any issues with any fuel on any course, yeah. Ironman or otherwise. I'm just lucky that way, I guess. Um, but some people are really sensitive to certain sugars, um, yeah. or if there's dairy in it, um, or stuff like that. Yeah, they're it's not good. So, so I'm just gonna bring my own stuff. Yeah, you don't want that. No, don't want any GI issues. That's not good. All not I can good. think about is GI Joe. <laughs> Wait, so when you say GI issues, you think of GI Joe? That's all it like. I mean, like I, I thought gastrointestinal, and then it was like, oh, GI Joe. GI Joe, yeah, military. That's your military Great. background. Great cartoon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's. So. What are there anything that you want to tap, tap into, or just kind of elaborate on, um, for someone that. It's not that much, but again, that 10 days out. Right. So that, you know, we were talking about nutrition and, and what you said earlier with training goes the same with nutrition is consistency is key. Um, you and I talked, um, you know, before about how people are constantly trying to supplement, you know, um, so they're always looking for that new, you know, that new powder yeah. or that new gel or that new drink or that new pill um, and, but those are supplements and that's exactly what that word Correct. means is to supplement, you know, a diet, you know, rich in, you know, whole foods, you know, non-processed grains, um, you know, lean cuts of meat and, and probably smaller amount than I think most people think, um, you know, the, I, I hate saying it, but the fads, you know, of, it used to be Atkins and then it was, you know, bulletproof and now it's keto you know, for <laughs> for endurance athletes to be able to maintain ketosis, I don't even think when people say that, like, yeah, I'm in ketosis, you know, they pee on a little stick, you know, a piece of paper every day, and they think they're in ketosis when that is that doesn't actually tell you you're in ketosis. You need to take blood right. to actually tell you if you're in ketosis. And then to be able to maintain that, for your body to become adapted to that type of, of diet it takes a really long time and a lot of people it it doesn't work yeah it's that's the biggest problem i think with a lot of nutrition is people one not understanding like oh it worked for this guy yeah i mean you can pretty much find a positive case for any argument that it worked great for but it's understanding the science really understanding the science and that's where it's just like man just eat clean yeah and that's one thing I noticed I, I wanted to mention last time, but when I did that um, FitCon, the fitness conference, you know, there's booths for everything, everything from that, you know, bang um, energy drink, which literally had like a stage with people dancing and, and strobe lights and disco music going, or maybe not disco, sorry, that's me, my age there, but, you know, whatever hip hop music was going and people lined around the corner for their free can of bang. And then just around the corner was like, you know, the keto lane. And I noticed something that was, you know, you don't, everything keto is in a bag or a bo- or a container. So you can't eat keto-ish unless you're eating a pro- something that's been processed. Yeah, like, because they're like, you know, keto um, chocolate chips, you know, and keto <laughs> peanut butter, or keto this and keto. So this, this keto, you know, situation that's going on it's uh, there's a lot of um, people's trying to sell you products that are keto right. legit and i think that's why you see it in the news and you see it in the magazines and this movie star did it and you know and your best friend's you know sister's cousin you know lost 20 pounds in the 10 days you know when yeah if you stop drinking soda and eating donuts you don't have to go keto just stop eating soda drinking donuts at, you know what I mean? Drinking soda and eating donuts, <sighs> and you can't maintain it. Oh, I love donuts. It's... Actually, I really don't like donuts, but I do. I don't like donuts either. I like pizza. Well, you like pizza? <laughs> 
You told me you eat a pizza every week. Do you really eat pizza every week, like a whole pizza? Yeah, us- like I'll usually sit down at home alone with a large pizza uh, about once a week. Okay. Are you watching like some sort of like chick flick and you know? Yeah, it's like, usually the drowning your usually, sorrows usually in the pizza. notebook. <laughs> the notebook. <laughs> with candles. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the first night that Maddox is back with her mom. And right. You just sit at home by yourself and just eat your whole pizza, watching the notebook yeah. over and over. Okay. All right. Or uh, say say anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that movie. So good. John Cusack's amazing. He is amazing. He's cute. Or he was. I mean, he's still cute, I guess. Kind of. He was cute when I was younger. I don't I haven't seen him lately, so I don't know. Um, but no, seriously. So, and I, as an endurance athlete to maintain a keto diet is I, honestly, I mean, there is, everyone always counts those outliers, you know, some pro, right. you know, guy who just happens to say, I'm not saying he's not, but that he is on a keto diet. And I mean, there is actually, you know, some pretty high up, um, coaches out there that are actually promoting a ketosis type of diet. But the, the science behind it, it's just not there. It's just not there. Right. You know, there's this great book called uh, Peak Performance. Um, I forget who wrote it. I actually have it upstairs. Um, <laughs> amazing book. Great book. There's a lot of science in there that kind of debunks that whole keto thing. Another book, um, Endure, is also another great book. Um, it has a bunch of stuff in there. And one of the paragraphs is about um, nutrition and how using nutrition to enhance your performance and ketosis is not yeah. one way of doing that. And I think it's, they're, they're trying to move away from high sugar, high process. And so they go completely to the extreme and do right. absolutely, you know, 20 grams. That's an apple. So you're telling me I can't have more than an apple a day and apples grown from the earth. How can you, so I can't have an apple and an orange that day because right. Yeah, yeah, it just like doesn't make sense just, to me. Yeah, I just I always encourage people if they're gonna get on to something to really understand why, and it's mm-hmm. it's like they see all these people like I always love it when people come in like oh this guy all he does is like a ton of joint mobility stuff and he's jacked, and he, this is what he talks about all the time on his Instagram. I'm like, yeah, well he's leaving out the part that he has like 15 years of solid strength training. And that's his background, and now mm-hmm. he's kind of maintaining and, and really hitting on all this stuff. But that is not what made him look. No, that's not like what that. made him look he, like that. And, and like, <laughs> In fact, what? he's no probably way. doing the mobility no stuff way. now because he messed himself <laughs> so, up from lifting so heavy for so many years. That. You know, doing you know the same movement patterns over and over and over. He realized, wait, you know, my elbow's always hurting me. You know my back or, and so now he's like moved into the mobility but he still now works at better you know movement patterns yeah. Yeah, I yeah. always laugh like, mm-hmm. people ask me and they're like, oh, I don't see you do like a ton of barbell stuff but I'm a, like and I'm a big guy I guess but like it was a lot of barbell stuff that allowed me to get bigger first and now right. I maintain and I do a lot I don't do a whole lot of like bilateral movement I do a lot more unilateral strength work, and so it's easy to stay that way and strength and the strength trains that. And I, you know, I'm always a huge proponent of strength, mm-hmm. but not at the expenditure or expense of mobility and pain. Yeah. And anything done in excess is gonna wear and tear on your body, and it's just knowing that that's a part of it if you're trying to compete but in doing your best to mitigate it and, and prehab and rehab it. And like it, all of it is of vital importance to having that mm-hmm. complete picture so that you have longevity. And, right. you know, so like the whole idea of like that mid pack athlete and that ageless athlete, what we're talking about is helping people be able to enjoy this as long as possible and not right. beat themselves up. And, and that takes a lot of effort and, well, for like me, when I couldn't run competitively anymore, like I could go for a run, but I couldn't run competitively and definitely not off the bike and definitely not an Ironman, a marathon. So I could either keep pounding my knee and just making it through and finishing and get another finisher's medal that I'm going to hang on my wall, 
which is fine. Fine for some people, that's fine, but I wanted something more. So that's why I switched to the swim bike. Yeah. Um, because I can now be competitive. I'm saving my knee. Um, so I'm, and I'm, so I'm not in, also, I'm not in, in an inflammatory state. Because if my knee is inflamed, my whole body's responding to that. So yeah. I'm, you know, in a really negative pattern daily when I was still trying to carry that run, you know, at, at the marathon distance. Like, I probably could maybe still do the half marathon, but right now I'm just <laughs> trying to stay focused. <laughs> right. um, but no, but you see so many people continually move through movement patterns that they know are hurting them. And they either, you know, oh, I'll ice it or I'll just take an Advil or, you know, I'll go get another shot for my doctor or, you know, why? Like, People I understand like, why, when you but come find in something and say, else. The normal, oh, I'll just get the normal aches and pains. Oh, did you hurt like mm-hmm. that as a kid? No? <laughs> okay, then it's not normal. Like it, Hey, it, 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 it's because we're getting older. I right? hate hearing that. That's That's not... Yes, it does take longer to recover as we get older. We don't recover as quickly. Yes, we don't have as much collagen, not just in our skin, on our faces, but also in our joints and in our body. So, yes, that's true. And if you've had really bad movement patterns for long periods of time and old injuries that you never addressed, then, yes, you have some issues but then address the issues and see if you can then correct those movement patterns. Yes. And then maybe you could do those things that you want to do without pain. Yes. Not just popping in Advil. Yes. You know, and f- with a with a glass of Chardonnay. I mean, I've never done that, but I just know people who have. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, I've done that. <laughs> I'll admit it. I've never done it. Not with recently, Chard- though. I've never done it with Chardonnay. No. No. Maybe whiskey, but whiskey yeah that was like We've ar- army it. like prescribed pain medicine was whiskey and advil whiskey and advil yep yeah. because you gotta be tough right? i got this don't wimp out all right well you're doing a great job i'm really oh, proud thanks. of you thanks <laughs> still faster than you my my run proves that this week I don't see. Let me look you up on Strava. Nope, you're not on there. No, actually, I am. I are you really? Yep. Wait, where? Are you really on Strava? I don't know. No, you're not. No, yes, I, I really. Yes, no, I did it after you said so. Did you? So you really are? Okay, I'm going to search you. Where are you? Hold on. Search. Okay. Here you go. I don't see you on there. Hold on. Oh, Deacon Andrews. Yes, you are. Looks like I can't see. Hold on. Let me put on my glasses. Is that you? Yep, that's you. Okay, I'm following you now. Let's see if you have any posts. I did. I, did. I told you. My phone died. <laughs> died like, you have six people following you. It's kind of a no, big nine. deal. I found out, too, that I actually had a Strava account like two years ago. So you didn't even know. No. But I don't see. There's no There's no activities. It just. Hold on. Let's see the activities. Uh, yeah, it's blank. <laughs> nothing happens. There's nothing on there. What is that? Is that you? That was when everything it. died yesterday. Oh, okay. Well, I don't, I don't see you on here. Huh. Yeah. I'll keep it. I'll, oh. I'll do better at it. As long, I'll give you kudos every time I see you. As, do long, as long as I win. As long as you win. What are you gonna? You're, like win what? Like win? Like beat me? Win or? I don't know. Are you sure you want a girl to beat you? I mean, especially old lady. I mean, that's kind of old. Okay. So we have to pick a race for you. I know. I think you should do Echo. So Echo is July, I want to say July 11th. July 11th. Okay. And we'll do Sprint Distance. That's a great race. It's right here um, at the uh, okay. Echo Reservoir. That's why they call it Echo. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> But it's a <laughs> shut up. But it's a great course. Um, swim is great. Great course on the swim. The bike course is is nice. The uh, road they repaved. I think they repaved that this one section of the road that was really bad. Um, and then the run, you're running up and down the um, the rail trail. So oh, nice. it's it's yeah, it's a really great course. Done. Okay. I'll get all the details. I'll get signed up. I'll s- send you the link. Boom.
in the books, folks. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well. So when you when you get back? I'll get back Saturday night. So maybe we can okay. link up Sunday. Yeah, Sunday I'll be packing. So we'll definitely I'll be home. So we'll we'll figure something out. Word. Maybe we'll talk about pickle juice. Oh. You know what? I actually saw that in an episode of Billions. So in an episode of Billions, um, Taylor, if anyone knows Billions, Taylor comes into the office and she's ready to talk to this one girl she's never met before. And the girl has literally a jar, a pickle jar with pickle juice in it because she's hung over. So it's totally like the thing now. So oh, yeah. it would be so cool no, and happening. I just really hope that there's no validity to it because I just really don't want to drink it ever. Okay, so so here's the thing. There is literally, I can't say, Chardonnay. two pickle juice. <laughs> so it's not, we'll talk about it in detail, but it's not the drinking of the juice and going into your stomach. It's not the sodium content. It's these transparent receptors on your tongue that as soon as it hits your mouth, it like shocks the, seriously, it not shocks you, like shocks you, but it blunts the, the cramping like immediately. So, so it's, like it's, it's in school, your mouth. So you can, old school, like once it touches your lips, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. But you could actually probably like swish it around your mouth and spit it out. And it would do the same thing as if you swallowed it. Let me see. Well, I think we should make you drink like a whole of those little containers I bought. Oh, it would be so yummy. No. Okay, we'll shot it together. We'll do it together. We'll do it with a beer chaser. How about that? Uh, I could be down for that. <laughs> I'll bring the donuts and the beer <laughs> and the pizza. <laughs> Perfect. All right, then then I can Perfect. do it. Perfect. All right, well, go ride your bike or spin. Or something. And do something. Right. It's a beautiful day out today. Yeah. I got sunburned yesterday. You can't really see, but I got a sunburn from my ski, from my ski, my swim cap right here, from my eyebrows. That's Not legit. Here. Yeah. It is legit. It's it's like this is serious athletic tan going on here. A serious athlete right here. That's next, folks. Next level, folks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can't teach All right, that. Well, you have a safe flight. All right. Why do people say that? I have a safe flight, right? I don't, I don't even know. Why do we say that? Like, as if you were in control of that situation at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> don't get arrested. There no, we go. There, there you go. Don't get arrested. <laughs> Don't get arrested by TSA. Life goals. <laughs> life goals. No cavity searches. <laughs> I'm calling you if I have to get bailed out. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful right, afternoon. Sir. We'll talk to yes, you soon. You too. Absolutely. All right. Take care. Later.